All right, everybody, welcome to the Ridgeline Hunting Podcast. I'm your host, David, and I'm here with my co-host, Mike Peterson. And this is brought to you by Phelps Game Calls, professional-grade game calls made for every hunter. And we actually um, we used one of their game calls this weekend, the Phelps Fawn Call. Um, this weekend, we didn't really have any luck with that, but um, we uh, tested some sleep systems. Um, I've been using mine pretty much all year. I've used it during turkey season, and now with the, it being really hot out, used it during bear season, and um, they're actually really cool. Um, the company is out of Kennewick. It is River Country Products. Um, Mike is using the single man uh, TP tent, and I'm using the three man TP tent, and they go up extremely fast. They are pretty light. Uh, I used mine last weekend on my bear hunt, and I had pack on my back. But for the three-man tent, with my XO K2 3500, it took up a lot of room. Um, Like a lot of room. So I would not recommend using that one on a backpacking hunt. But if you're doing a spike camp, maybe out of the truck... Or not hiking in super far it's it's not that bad um i used it last weekend and i hiked all over the god's green earth and it wasn't terrible but i did sacrifice um a bit of room in my pack which i don't think i would have needed anything else um and i think i would have been able to get at least five to six days worth of food i was only going for the weekend and i still had quite a bit of room in my pack but um with the single man tent, um, we did have our packs set up for going backpacking in, but we ended up just stopping at a decent spot kind of high up, and we just camped out of the back of the truck. But, Mike, your pack, uh, what pack are you running? I'm running the Kuyu Pro LT 5500. And you had, you had yours all packed up, and it was... Yeah, it was fine, perfectly good. I still had room left. Yeah. So he had quite a bit of room, and definitely um, with the single man, um, you could you could probably pack in, with, well, at least with Mike's pack, at least 10 days worth of food still probably inside that pack. And Mike actually had a whole lot of extra stuff he didn't really, really need. But it's his first time hunting, so Mike is finally using one of his, his tags. He's out bear hunting with me, and, um, you know, how how... How'd you like it so far, man? Uh, so far, it was good, besides getting bit up by ants, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will have um, pictures up on the Instagram page, um, and that is the Ridgeline Hunting Podcast, or Ridgeline Hunting, of how big Mike's hand is right now. Uh, he got either stung by a bee or something got him, but he looks like he has a boxing glove on. Uh, we don't know. Had to be an ant. <laughs> I don't know what it was, <laughs> but uh, he's got like a bite on his hand that made his hand all swelled up, and then he has like a Popeye forearm, and it's two separate bites, so it's not swollen all the way up to it. Um, if it was, we'd be probably rushing to the hospital right now. But we are actually leaving camp. We are leaving Bear Camp, and we are heading home. But uh, so we came in Friday night, set up camp. Got everything all ready to go. What, 5.30 in the morning? Saturday morning or something like that? Yeah, like, we probably left around 6. Yeah. Yeah, so we got ready, got got everything. Um, I did not pack in water. Uh, I was... We actually went to a completely different spot than I was at last weekend, which you kind of hike in, you can get your water and keep keep on going. Well, we went to a completely different spot, and to get to water, you're going like 400 feet down in elevation to get to the nearest water. And, you know, on the map, it shows that there's water. Well, when you get down there, it was seriously just like a trickle. I mean, it was it was enough for me to get nice, clean water. I mean, I pumped it right in. It was great. And we headed back up, and we were, I think we got down and back up, and it was like, what, 930 or something like that? For in the afternoon? Yeah, when after we got the water. Yeah, I believe so. It was something like that because yeah. 
then we then we were trying to find a spot to glass um for bears and everything so we hike up even more um get to where we think it's a good glassing spot and we um sit down and get everything set up eat a couple snacks have some water and then um we start glassing and all of a sudden i just kind of look up and i was like oh i'm gonna glass this little shady spot boom there's a freaking bear it's uh milling around on top of the stump it actually looked like it was licking and biting on the stump it was a uh, it was it was pretty funny yeah, it was like chomping down on it and then um it it was a uh, i did range it it was 485 yards but the bear was not sitting still and to be honest i'm not very comfortable shooting that far i am not uh like a proficient rifle hunter i don't i don't really practice those distances um you know 300 340 50 you know somewhere around there i'm 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 okay with but that 485 i was not comfortable shooting that range um and to be honest there was really no shot the bear was not sitting still it was rolling around on the stump and off the stump and off to the side of the stump and it was it was having a good old day um but i tried to grab my canon camera um i have like a 200 millimeter lens on it and tried to uh, film the bear and it did not have enough zoom to even pick up like the bear in the shadow um so by the time i went back on the glass again the bear was gone so we we're not sure where it slipped out from or where it went we hung out for another 20 to 30 minutes to see if we could see the bear and we couldn't so we came up with the great plan to um try to get up and above the bear and from i don't know 11 o'clock took us till about almost 4 30 to get on top of yeah. the bear lots of miles in elevation side hilling for days yeah our feet were burning like so the bear was actually on another slope uh, straight across from us and on the map it didn't really seem like it was going to be too far because you have to side hill kind of go down the creek just a little bit and then start climbing up because the the um we figured that we'd climb up because the wind was kind of going up the hills so we definitely didn't want the wind blowing straight into the bear. If we would have went just straight down to the creek and went right straight up, the, our wind would have been blowing straight to the bear. So we figured we'd go around, get on top of the bear, and then uh, you know see if we could see the bear from being up on top of it. But by the time we got over there, the bear was long gone. Um, we didn't see it anymore, and then you know it was our trek back that was a pain in the ass because we we're just like well screw it we're gonna just go straight down and back up because we're not gonna go hike back another four and a half hours or whatever back to the truck because where we started our hike was still a lot further away from camp yeah. so we would have got back to camp you know at 10 o'clock or something like that so we were like well we're just gonna go down and back up well Mike got his first taste of a deadfall. Yep. <laughs> Not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, uh, climbing up and over and through things and shoot, I, I fell, split, my, my finger got ripped open, got stabbed in the back of the leg, like Mike's getting bit and stung and all this <laughs> other crap. Like, um, But for your, Mike, for your first time out hunting pretty much out of your backpack you know what how would you how would you grade your weekend no, it was pretty good probably like a seven and a half. Seven and a half out yeah. of ten <laughs> i'll take that the one thing that i always told mike you know going leading into and when we're actually just walking back to camp today is that it's always a good thing to see the animal that you're trying to hunt now, when you go out and hunt and you don't actually see anything, that's terrible. Like, that, that is a, a bad time out, you know, hunting. 
or even scouting say you're scouting for deer and you don't see any deer like oh my gosh you know you have to reevaluate where you're going at least we're that's how i think of it but i mean mike's first time out bear hunting and we spotted a bear yep that that's pretty cool and heard a few yeah so saturday was was a good day saturday was a good day because we not only saw the bear that was a, um, across the canyon from us but we also heard bears stumping like they were tearing stumps apart you could you could hear them and you definitely knew like what it was doing yeah it, it was cool so actually yeah before we actually got up and tried to find this other bear i did sit and call for a little bit to see if we could get any bears drawn in or you know if they're on the other side of the ridge if they would take a peek and look um but yeah we didn't we didn't see anything else saturday we did spook a deer yeah yeah we did spook a deer that was pretty fun saw a lot of poop yeah yeah there's poop everywhere (laughs) it's pretty funny Uh um but yeah today today we just basically went back to the glassing spot glassed up the hill for all morning yeah and then we just figured like we haven't seen anything on this hill and it was oddly quiet today too yeah we didn't hear anything crashing through anything you know no bears like tearing stumps up we didn't hear anything it was very very quiet yeah chipmunks that's about it chipmunks and lizards <laughs> chipmunks lizards and a hawk i was fine <laughs> Um, that and flicking ants off of us, but, um, yeah, today was very mild. It was, we didn't really have anything going on, but, you know, my takeaway for the weekend is just like, we saw what we're trying to hunt for Yeah. on, on the first day. And I'm not the greatest bear hunter. Um, I'm still trying to fill my first bear tag and I've really only had like stocking opportunities on two one kind of got burgered up on a bow hunt um i was out elk hunting and saw a bear and went to go stock it and it got crapped up and then um on a spring bear hunt um i had my son with me and we had a bear at about 285 yards but it was just this big old black ball and i couldn't tell what was its ass or its head um, and it was in some super thick brush. So I was actually trying to wait for it to like come out of that thick brush to a clear opening in it and just never did. So it didn't really, I didn't have a shot. And then this time this bear was, you know, not in a, in a range that I felt comfortable with. Also, it was not, it didn't sit still for one moment. And it, it was like rolling around. It was like on needed some add medicine (laughs) it was all over the place but it was really cool to see for the you know short time of period that we saw the bear um but yeah i take this away as a win i mean we saw the bear i mean if we would have been in a different situation like if we found the glassing spot that we're at today glassing the same hill it reduced the yardage by like 150 yards yeah I mean, the farthest shot to that stump was like 320-something yards. It was insane. Like, if we would have went to that spot yesterday, we would have been talking about how we killed the bear. Yeah. So, it's just times like that where you um, sit back and try to reevaluate your hunt and figure out what you did right and what you did wrong. And what we did wrong is that we went too high up. Because, obviously, if you think of, like, a canyon, it's it's like a v yeah so like the if if that bear is way up at the top and we're at the top of the other spot we're like the farthest part away in the v yeah and this spot that we have this morning was pretty good we can actually see the bottom of the canyon other spot we didn't yeah that's that's actually a really good point we could actually see the bottom like our closest shot was like under 100 yards yeah like to the other side of the canyon so that, i mean that was ideal obviously if a bear would have came up out of that creek bottom we would have freaking smoked its butt oh yeah it would have been no problem and and mike his first time actually even shooting a rifle outside of hunter's ed was uh on thursday 
and I had him shooting at 100 and 200 yards, and um, he was six, shooting a 6.5 Creedmoor, and that thing is on point. Oh yeah. Yeah, he was he was shooting really well, so I was pretty excited about that, and I was just like, okay, you're pretty much hitting dead center, you know, at 100 and 200 yards, you're ready to shoot anything really. So that was pretty exciting leading into this weekend. But um yeah, that that's going to be it for our bear hunt. Um Mike, you know, how'd you like it so far? How'd you like the the one one man tent and the and the actual weekend? Uh, the one man tent was really good. I very actually recommended people that would want to go out and do like a solo kind of hunting situation. It's just has enough room to put everything you need, your pack, your gun, or your bow, and it has like a little space at the bottom for like to put your boots and whatnot and still have a good amount of room for your sleeping. That's good to know. And I'm actually thinking about picking one up. Um, what's great is that you can go to their website or you can pick it up on Amazon. So they, they do sell through Amazon. Um, and I want to say the one person TP tent. Now you put these up with, um, hiking sticks or a hiking stick. Yours was just one, right? Yeah, One hiking stick, no extension. And mine is you need both your hiking sticks plus an extension. But if you have a little bit larger pack, my pack's not like the the biggest pack it's great for me i like it it usually works all the time for what i use it for but um it, it takes up a lot of space but i would definitely recommend um these two the one the one person i'm definitely going to get on amazon i believe it's 59.99 yeah for the one man yeah yeah i believe so and then mine, the one that I used, I think is like 120, but I want to say it comes with the extension. Give me a second. I'm trying to find it. We're, we don't really have really good service, so yeah. it's taken a minute for it to load. But um, we're out in the mix right now. What's that? We're out in the mix right now. <laughs> yeah. We're in God's country. Yeah, River Country Products. The one person is fifty nine ninety five right now on Amazon. Or you can go to their website and and pick one up. I'm trying to find the price for mine. I want to say it's like hundred and twenty bucks. But I could be wrong. So their website is rivercountryproducts.com, and they're at a Kennewick, Washington. I would say these would probably be um, three season. Uh, actually, no, they are three season unless you, like for the three person, you can put a heater buddy in there. Um, that's what I did during um, turkey season. Kept the tent extremely warm, and my son and I were hunting in that, and we were perfectly fine. Um, it does not come with a t stove jack. Uh, I do not recommend you trying to put a stove jack in it because the material that's used for these trekking pole tents, it will melt. You will not have, you will not wake up to a shelter. Nope. It'll be melted around you. So that would not be good. But, um, yeah, I would check them out. Awesome. Awesome products out of Kennewick, Washington. Just one one owner, builder, and all that stuff. He he does it himself. It's pretty cool, pretty good product. Super lightweight. I mean the 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 three man's got some weight to it, but you know it's. I like it better than the tent because you're not taking any um. Of the, what are those? The little tent like, tent deals. The little extension rods. Yeah, like the little tent rods. You don't have those. Um, they do come with stakes, guidelines. The only thing you need is a trekking pole. And um, on rivercountryproducts.com, he also has 
um, tent stakes. Or, I'm sorry, trekking poles. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. And the trekking pole extension, if you need to pick that up as well. Uh, I believe the three-man comes with it, but I could be wrong. Um, but a great product. I'd recommend it. Unless you're looking for something with a stove jack. Yeah. Then there's there's plenty of plenty of products out there with stove jacks and stoves and all this other stuff. Um, these shelters are they do have floors and bug nets in them, so there's that extra weight. They are not floorless. I actually liked it. I bought it for because it had the bug net in it. Yeah, and I like to have the floor too. Yeah. Just um, these areas out where at least where I hunt, there's a lot of ants. Oh yeah, the I ants know. are not going to stay away, so um, they're they're going to be all up in everything, all up in your crevices. Yep. <laughs> Plus all the dirt. You don't want to wake up with dirt up your butt crack, so. Well, I mean, you with floorless, you can throw down, like, Tyvek, like a floor, and then your pad, and then you're in your sleeping bag. So, I mean, for light weightness, I understand floorless. It's just for where, usually where I'm hunting, there's this, a lot of ants, ticks, and other bugs. Yeah. And I'm not a bug person. I don't, I don't enjoy it. Not I don't enjoy the bugs. So... Before we go, we are going to be giving away a Phelps Easy Sucker. Now, uh, Mike actually saw mine because I started doing some cow calls, and he was like, whoa, that thing's cool. And I was like, dude, it is so easy to do a cow call with this with this product. It's, it's like, mind-blowing. And uh, he's actually going to pick one up now. So uh, that's pretty cool. Um, and I... I did. He he does uh, have some mouth diaphragms, diaphragms, but he's having a hard time trying to produce that sound. And with this easy sucker, uh, I believe that it's gonna it's gonna come to him, and then it'll also help him understand the tone that he needs to make with the regular mouth diaphragm. Because with the mouth diaphragm, I believe you can project louder. Um, than the easy sucker but the easy sucker is it it does project a lot of sound but you can't go from that to doing a bugle with the mouth diaphragm you can do it all yeah so but the easy sucker is awesome it is an awesome product it's definitely going in my arsenal um you know hopefully it can help me close the distance on a bull or a cow or whatever this year so i'm excited for that and then you know mike will be able to produce um, these sounds a lot easier as well and it will help him and you know who knows maybe we're in a situation where he needs to be cow calling because I'm in the shooter position and he's kind of back a little bit farther and then he can use that easy sucker to produce the cow calls that we need to get a shot off I mean it's as easy as that mm-hmm. and I think that you're going to be able to produce those cow sounds like right out of the package yeah it's that's I have faith in the product enough to where I can say, like, you are going to produce cow sounds right when you put it in your mouth. Yeah. It's it's that good. But um, our winner is Matt Boone. Matt Boone, on um, I will be contacting you through Instagram. Uh, Matt Boone has actually been um, listening to the podcast since day one and following the Instagram since day one. So, Matt Boone, we appreciate you. And you just won the Phelps Easy Sucker. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, We had an awesome weekend out here bear hunting. Um, The next time we'll actually be hunting is actually probably about September 1st, man. It's going to be deer season. Yep. And Mike and I have taken a few days off work, and we are going to be on a five-day deer hunt. We don't know where we're going yet because... Uh, we actually used this trip as kind of like a deer scouting trip, and we saw one doe. Yeah. And, um, yeah, frustrating on the on those ends, but we were out here bear hunting. We just kind of used it kind of as a little scouting trip, and yeah. I would I would mark this one off the list for, for any type of deer hunting. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't see any deer. Uh, lots of tracks, lots of poop, but who knows where they're at. Man. They're not where we were, and we were up from the bottom to the top. 
Yeah, we're all over the place. So, thank you everybody for listening. And again, you can listen to the Ridgeline Hunting Podcast on Apple Podcast, Spotify, Google Podcast, and also on YouTube. But on YouTube, it is Ridgeline Hunting. And here soon, we actually do plan on filming our podcasts. So start looking for that on YouTube. And then uh, thank you for listening, and we'll catch you guys next time. Later. Bye.